At the end of 2018, a few houses in the UK reported that they had crumbling mortar between their bricks. Obviously, nobody wants the house to fall down, so we thought it was important to find out what was going on. Morning, Trev. We're here in Halifax to find out about mortar. First of all, then, can you tell us what mortar is? Hi, Chris. Yes, simply put, mortar is a building material um, composing of cement, which, when mixed with water and fine sands, it cures and hardens. This is really the bond and the bind that locks all the bricks, concrete blocks, stones, and other masonry materials that are used on site. So, what are the key things to be aware of when you're mixing mortar? The consistency of the mix is important, and that is important to obtain the best possible bond between the mortar and the brick and the stone that you're installing. What can affect the quality of a mortar mix? Well, a few things. Using un unsuitable aggregates, incorrect mixing procedures, too much water, that can lead to weakness and low durability. Quality assured mortars are produced to BSEN regulations and used in accordance with the BS guidance will give consistently good results. Now we're off to find the difference between factory produced mortar and mixing on site. Hi Jim, um, so we've been finding out how the wrong mix can completely ruin mortar. Um, why does it need to be so precise? Surely you can get the same level of accuracy just using a, a bucket and a shovel. Hi Chris. Um... Well, in, in the traditional building method, mortar is what holds the building together. So it's important that it's strong enough and durable enough to last the life of the structure. So why take any chance with that? Really, mortar should be factory produced by a manufacturer that CE marks all of its products to give that guarantee of quality and performance. So when choosing a mortar supplier, the MIA can help. The Mortar Industry Association is a national body that holds details of all registered manufacturers. And these companies use lab testing to select the best materials and design mixes that will perform to the required quality and exceed the standards set down in the British and European standard. But surely the process is the same whether you're mixing in a factory or on site, it's just that in, in a factory it's on a much bigger scale. Not quite that simple Chris. Um, you see not all sands produce a good quality mortar, so a reputable manufacturer will test, lab test many different sands in order to find the best locally available sand to go with the cement and the admixtures that they've chosen. We put an admixture in the, in the mortar to aerate the mix, to give it its workability properties, to give it its durability properties, and to reduce the amount of water going in there. Now obviously water is an essential, essential ingredient, uh, but you need to keep the water to an absolute minimum because too much water reduces strength. Now, by putting the admixture in, we can pull the water content down, we can aerate the mix, we can give the workability and the long-term durability and the resistance to freeze-thaw cycles in its hardened state. But, by that same token, if you overdose the admixture, it can destroy the, the strength of the mortar and, and, and really damage the quality. What's the major difference, then? Well, a mortar plant like this one uses a, a computerised process control unit which stores all the approved and tested designs and it's calibrated to dispense the raw materials to very fine tolerances accurately and consistently. So you know that you're getting the same mix every time and you're getting that quality. What it also does is records the details of every batch made so that that information is stored securely for future reference. But on site, your mortar will be ready to use straight away. Do you do anything to slow down the curing in transit and what you're doing there, could that affect the strength of the mortar? Well, a factory produced ready to use mortar includes a chemical retarding agent which delays that cement set for a period of time, typically two days plus, to give adequate time for it to be used on site. Now, it, it retards it whilst it's in its plastic state in the tub, but once that mortar's laid onto a dry brick or block, the retarder dies off and the cement set begins and the strength gain comes in as normal. How do you check the quality of the mortar when it arrives on site? We do a, a, a manual cone test at the depot uh, before the mortar leaves and again when it arrives on site to check the workability of the mortar. Now that cone reading is then recorded in the delivery information. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure Chris, thank you. So clearly, reliability is the most important thing you need to consider when you're choosing mortar. 
Let's head off up to the lab and have a word with Michael Watson to find out what testing our motor goes through. Michael, thanks for having us. Um, we spoke to Jim earlier. He tells us that you do some really intensive tests here. So what's the difference between what you do here in the lab and what he does in the factory? Well, Chris, um, we take the fresh samples of mortar back from the plants and bring them here to process. Uh, we check for air content consistency, uh, the retardation levels, make sure they last as long as they should. We produce prisms for flexural and compressive testing. But if you're being so precise with your mix measurements, why do you need to go to all this trouble to test it? As we use locally sourced sands, uh, the mix designs vary from plant to plant, so each plant has to have their own mix designs so we can guarantee hitting the strength requirements. So what kind of results are you looking for in, for example, a house build? That depends on the application and where it's being used in the house. Um, the mortar above ground is just specified as 4 newton, whereas the mortar below ground is specified as 12 newtons. And our mix designs are designed to achieve those. This is all really impressive, Michael, but surely a labourer who's been working on site for 20 years knows what a good mortar is just from looking at it. This testing, along with um, the automated batching plants that record everything that goes into the mixes on site, ensure we produce a consistent product, whichever plant it's produced from. Yeah, I suppose two brickies are always going to have a different opinion about what the right thing to use is. Clearly then, it's a no-brainer to have ready-to-use mortar on site. If you're after extra precision, detail and reassurance, factory-produced mortar is the way to go.